When you're playing Chopin's Etude Opus 10, number 10 with small hands, you need to make sure you let both hands rotate. You need to let the left hand especially close. I'll walk you through the main game of the piece and show you a couple of strategies that I found helpful and I hope you'll find them helpful too. If we start with the main game of the etude at the very beginning, it's a good idea to start with playing chord, chord, chord so that this becomes this. And you could do that with just a simple bass in the left hand. Then you'll rotate from the thumb to the rest of the chord. And you can actually practice just one, two, one, two to practice the rotation and learn your way around the piece without having to reach out to the octave the whole time. Normally, I'd tell you to practice this kind of thing with shifting accents. So sometimes you practice it this way. And sometimes you practice it this way. But Chopin has actually already written that in. So the opening has slurs from the chord to the next note, like I just did it. And you could even practice that as really ugly chords, although I'm not sure that's so helpful, but you could do. Save that for a day when you feel like you have some aggression to get out. Then in measure nine, he shifts the accents so they're back where you expect with the slur from the note to the chord. It's worth paying attention to all the shifting accents through this piece. It can be really hard to hear some of them in performance, even the best performances, because they go by so fast. But Chopin is teaching us a really valuable practice technique here. If he had only written one version, like say the staccato one in measure 13, you would still need to practice it with lots of different accents. So you would need to do this, and this, and a bunch of different ways too. But he's actually written a lot of those in through the piece so that as you play through the whole thing, you find yourself doing the different ways you would want to practice it. I know this etude doesn't usually have a nickname, but I like to think of it as the prism etude, kind of like the crystal that hangs in the window and sends lights dancing around the room. So that's the game of the piece for everybody. But for those of us with small hands, we also have to navigate these big distances in the left hand. If you can reach a one to four octave, and turning will help, I really recommend it because it's easier to have the six note group feel like one gesture. If you can't, Go ahead and use five, but still feel like it's one gesture so that you can come down to the next one. If you can reach that one to four octave, you're going to need to use a hand position I call the one-eared llama. The one-eared llama is a hand position that might seem sort of strange, but can actually be really, really useful and helpful. So if you imagine that your hand and your arm are a llama, here's two-eared llama, hello, with this being the body, and this being the neck, and this being the head, ears, nose, mouth. The distance between the ear and the nose is actually really far, and if you let your hand close, it can help you find the shape that you need. So just to really show you the difference between what's possible with a flat hand stretching and what's possible with a one-eared llama, this is about as far as I can stretch my fourth finger and fifth finger apart. And it doesn't feel great, and it's not that far. So if I take this distance, and then I turn my other hand into a one-eared llama, look at how much farther I can reach between five and four. And of course it's true in both hands. So the one-eared llama reminds us that we are three-dimensional creatures, and that we're going to sometimes need strange hand positions that are not just your typical one, two, three, four, five position, but that you can find the comfortable position that will let you get to where you need to go. So you open up to the octave. Then let the thumb and second finger come back to be the nose of the llama. Then you can reach from the E flat four to the A flat on five. You can even let the thumb fly up on the way down. But I find
find it easier to think of Llama with the nose closing here. Whether you let the thumb fly up or do a more, let's call it a traditional Llama, the idea of the Llama can remind you that five and four don't have to be on the same team. So they don't have to be going together this way. They don't have to be on the same team and the hand can make really surprising shapes at the keyboard. And that happens a lot in this piece. Chopin only gives us those left hand pivot half notes in the first couple of measures. And by doing that, he's showing us that rotating and pivoting is helpful anytime we have wide left hand expanses. In measures 21 and 22, I like to use five for the octave. Then pivot down with two to five. And of course, you should always use five for the octave if you have to. Lama idea is helpful here too. It's awful to stretch two and five flat. But turning and allowing the hand to close makes it work. In measures 46 to 48, you can leave out some of the tenor E flats in the left hand pinky. playing them up to here, you might decide to already take them out, but then as we get into measure 47, I either will play sometimes just the thumb from the D flat and the E flat up to the F flat, or sometimes just up to the F flat, and then now I'm done with the pinky E flat. The whole measure is easier to remember, and I think to play, if you think of the notes as having sharps instead of flats and double flats, like the whole bar is in A major. But it's actually functioning as the sexiest German sixth chord in the entire music literature. Practice measure 61 and measure 68 until the rest of the piece feels comfortable. We have these much larger jumps here. When you do, let go of the thumb and rotate and don't try to connect them. Don't do that. Also, it's really worth practicing the gesture from the chord down to the next note, so. And here's measure 68. Some additions will give you an A flat in the thumb at the very last note. But I recommend that you leave that A flat out, which is what Mikuli did. He was Chopin's TA, and he writes, So I'm doing a little bit of sliding from note to note to make it legato without the pedaling here. But you can also connect it with the pedal. after you play them and leave them out if you need to and rotate 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 enjoy opus 10 number 10 and let me know if you have any questions good luck